we're ready for another coat. I went ahead and I just got rid of all the high points already. So that's all ready to go for us right now. And let's just check this corner bead that we fixed yesterday. I'll just tap on it and it, there's mud in behind there now. It's not hollow. So everything's good there. And then, so today will be, we want to hit all of our corner beads again. And especially this, this butt joint. And we're just going to go over it. We've already sanded it from the other day. We'll just totally coat this. We'll go even wider, try to get it flatter. And remember, this is hollowed in a bit, so I'll try to get that filled up today. So that, because this will be two coats on that. That way on the third coat, I can just skim it out. And I can just skim it out. And then we want to hit this bead. Since we hit this one yesterday, it has two coats just on this part. So we'll hit this one this way as well. And then we'll, we're going to try to get our angle, one of our angles. Normally, if you're doing a room, you can hit at least one side of your angles by now. But just because we have these corner beads and that in the way, I don't want to compromise those. So we're just going to do a little four inch strip down there today as well. So um, I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to do these little parts first and then we'll come back and we'll shoot more difficult stuff. So with those little sides done, now I'll just continue on. So this second coat still fills a bit because the first one shrinks so much. So we still want to keep our trowel perpendicular, fill it up. Then you'll actually notice how much smoother it is after the second coat as well. Get it on there. I want to try not to go too wide yet because on the third one I want to be able to just go that much more to spread it out. So I don't want to max out the width of my trowel right now. I gotta keep that in mind for myself. So let's get, now we'll get rid of it. Had one little hitchhiker there. Fortunately, I did have that hitchhiker, but that's just going to stay there. Now I can do this way and all the way this way. Try to form this angle and make do a good job of it. That way I don't have to sand a bunch. And when I go to do my angles, I can just pull it through there, fill up any weird spots. Okay, I'm far enough away now that I can just do both sides and then continue from this point on. All right. <clears throat> so it's all blended out along the left side. So I know I don't have any extra buildup. I put enough down, but still feathering what you want. Now we just need to get this.
going to do that lightly one more time. And I'll just wipe it off on my pad so that I can kind of get a nice straight edge there, a nice clean edge. Okay. Yeah, you can tell that my mud's still a little stiff. Then we, we start to skim coat, we'll thin it right out. It's easier to apply and it'll fill those uh, low spots and it, that's why it's called a skim coat. You just kind of skim it over, make it smoother. Hoping that this doesn't wreck the other side. I'm just going to leave it like that. Fortunately, I do have a little sanding there to do, but I don't want to wreck this side since I did do a good job on it. <clears throat> just going to be real light. sure that it's feathered on this side and that you don't have any high spots. Okay, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to load up with some fresh mud and then we're going to hit this butt joint. So I marked the center where my tape was and I think we'll use the same concept as when we did when we do a regular butt join is we'll hit down the center we'll do each side sometimes takes a few attempts just to get it nice and wide so that it's flat over that tape I'm pushing fairly hard so that I can get it worked out to the sides there. Push that mud out to either side of the trowel. Now I'm just going to go lightly so that I can hide that pencil mark. Now I'm going to just hold my trowel up to the corner bead. It's going to be hard to tell how straight this is. But we're going to just try it. It's a little tricky with that corner bead being there, but that's, that's okay. So I'm going to load this up. I'm not going to put any weight if I can help it on the right side. So that's enough for now, that's more than enough for sure. Then I'll do this right side, then we'll get it all evened out. Might as well fill this too while I'm at it. Just wanted to fill those couple of hollow spots there, that's why I went up higher. See, and that's the thing, you don't want to bulges like this at the bottom. You want to get rid of that. That'll affect your baseboards down the road. Okay, 
I just did that lightly. Now all the weight will be on the right hand side. Okay, making a mess of myself here. Now let's get rid of all, let's just make it flat now. Let's see if we can do this. And the ultimate test will be tomorrow when it's dry. And this is pretty much the last time I want to fill it. I want to do as best job as possible. That way it's just skim coats after this. Okay. So I want to make sure that inside corner is done well. I can see that pencil mark from before. So I know that I'm, I'm down to a point that's safe. Let's try to get this part. Most of my weight's against the bead. Hit this roughly. Now I do have some ridges that basically happened when I went on the left and right side. So now I'll go down the center again and I might, well, let's just see what this looks like. I think those ridges are high spots, so we'll just hit left and right, try to get this flattened out. So I'm going to go center over these humps here. So there's a hump there, one here. I'm just going to go straight over top of those lightly. Just tell that they're high. It's actually looking really good. Okay, tomorrow will be the test of that. I'm actually, I'm just gonna clean up my trowel a bit. Or am I done? Yeah. I'm actually done with the trowel, so we'll hit this angle here. It takes a little bit because you'll always see it'll start to hollow out in the inside corner. And then I want to drag away any excess on that side. I'm going to actually hit up any overflow on this side now, then I should be able to hit this and take it straight down and be done. So I'm done with that to about here, and then I'll just continue down. I'm going to take off this right side. I'm putting more of the weight like this and just kind of blending that out. Then I'm going to angle my knife like this, just take off all the stuff that overflowed onto the other side. Now I can go over this and I'm going to keep this nice and square now. And that should prevent any overflow now because it'll drag it out on the left side here, the knife. Okay, so that's ang that angle's done and you can see why you don't want to do this side right now because they'll just keep overflowing into each other and it'll always mess it up. So you want to make sure that this is good and dry before you hit the other side. And really, after your tape is on, 
it really only takes two coats after that. So we'll do one full coat with the four inch, then we'll do an, the last coat with the six inch knife. Might as well hit the screw heads while we're at it. If you take a close look, you can see how they've shrunk. They've all kind of just dented in. That's why you want to hit those once again now, and then I'd hit them one more time. Because you want, you'll see a screw head. Well, after you do this, and you know more about mudding taping, you'll be able to see a lot more flaws. So you don't want to see these screw heads. You want to fill them up now and once more after that. That's pretty simple. Those will shrink just a hair more, and then we'll we'll hit those one more time, like I said. And you can just maybe just take a look while we're while we finished up for today. You can just see where it's filled in some spots. Up around this corner, it's already dry, so we know that we just barely skimmed over that. It's heavier in other spots than the other. And then. Yeah, over here there's quite a bit of dry, dry parts. You can just see how every time you do a coat, it basically just fills up any high or any lows and just evens everything out and makes it that much smoother. And if you can hit in the right light here, you can see how where we went center over the tape, it's actually drying. It's actually right down to the surface and everything else is just blended out from there so and what I want to say about this is just be cautious like I, I obviously have a little bit of experience I'm not an expert I don't do it every day but if you're if you're not feeling safe in putting that much mud on like we did just do a little bit at a time you can always add more and just keep checking it with the straight edge to see how much of a bow there is in there so we'll do that once that's dry. We're getting a good start. Once we finish up these angles, then really we're on to skimming after that. Okay. So about 10 more minutes have gone by. I just wanted to point this out. I was noticing that this is where that hump was the other day. And so we've just skimmed right over that. We basically went, took it right off there but you can see how now we've blended out further and this is filled and this is filled as well which we wanted and then over here we know that we can tell that this bead needed a good filling and it's starting to dry out here so that's a good sign so we know that we've filled it it's more complete we feathered it out properly so that's kind of what you want to look for so now as the coats progress, it's taking less and less dry time. It's been about five hours, and now we can hit these angles. I want to, the reason I want to do that now is to catch it up with the rest of it, so I'm kind of skim coating all at the same time. So we just did this one. So now I want to do the opposite side vertically here, and then its counterpart over here, and then since this is dry, I can drag this one this way. Now, I just want to touch up, just graze off any high spots with the sponge. Um, the reason I won't do that is just so the, the knife doesn't, like it's hard to push and scrape with the knife. Like it's just a little more dangerous, I guess. Plus, with this build up from the beads, I want to make sure that the sponge hits those off. So I'll just... lightly there. I want to work out any chunks in this inside corner. Okay, so we're ready to do that. And before we get going, might as well see what this butt joint looks like. I think it turned out pretty good. The only spot I can feel is right here. But let's just compare it with the straight edge. So you can see a little gap there. But that'll fill up on the next coat. That's okay because that always is hollow there a little bit. 
it's virtually flat right there and then I know that it's very good right there like there's a little bit right here and a little bit just over here but I think higher up I had a bulge and I can just tell yeah just teeter-tottering a little bit yeah it's teeter-tottering right there so what I'll do is I'll just mark this line here so I know to sand it out before I go and coat again but really all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sand that to make it flatter get rid of that hump and then I'll probably do two more skim coats and that should finish this whole area level it all out but that's later we'll just take care of these angles right now catch those up to the rest of our job now we can do our skim coating else okay leveled out there's actually virtually no spillage over into the other side so now I can finish this out get rid of anything there now we'll go this way It's always best to just keep working at it until you get mud coming off the full width of the putty knife because it's just it's easier to feather out and it's okay if it bubbles out on the left and right like it is right now because we can just wipe it off here we'll wipe it off over here I'm just going to touch up this inside corner. Then I'm going to finish this downward. Okay. Looks good. You can come up closer too if you want to see. So I need a little bit more right there. We'll just go over this again. See, like if you look at my putty knife, I don't need as much on this side, but I need more for the inside corner. So you can just do it that way too. Take a little bit off the edge that you don't need it. This little ridge right here, I'll take care of right now and I just put all the weight here and just enough on the right side just to take that off. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to get this first initial foot or so complete then I'm not messing with the inside corner anymore I'm gonna fix this I'm trying to get my arm out of the way it doesn't kind of look a little a little funny okay. boom Take a look there in that inside corner. There's just a few little flecks in the way, but you can take care of that when it's sanding. Okay, so let's let's finish this out. If you find afterwards that you have a few chunks left over on the other side, you can just carefully pull them downward rather than dragging it horizontally just go like that get rid of those high spots just less sanding later
So that takes care of the angles for today. And that should just level out um, all the weird mud that happened from this butt joint and the corner bead. So it'll help level that out and we'll just keep going. So I went ahead and did another coat. I wanted to catch everything up so that we're that much closer to doing a skim coat. Now first as I went around and I just sanded off lightly these inside angles just to knock off any high spots, right? Then what I did is I, this hump here, I just felt for it and I just sanded really like just in the one spot, concentrated it and now I can't feel that hump as much like it's almost gone I can feel a tiny bit but I still want to skim this out twice okay so after all the sanding was done I was just looking at it I figured okay I gotta hit the opposite side of my angles so I did that I did a four inch swipe all the way across there and I did one here then I just fixed this little lip up right in this inside corner added a little mud to that then after that, yeah, I made a few touch-ups. So I just touched up this little outside corner. I, then, if you remember, we drug this down. Then we came this way. And then I did another layer down. And you can see how it's, it's actually filled it a little bit more. And we just want to prevent being able to see that corner bead. Because you will, if you don't fill this good enough, you'll see like about three quarters of an inch you'll see like that little metal piece that's in the bead so you want to fill these up lots so I did both those sides I touched up this corner here a little bit now this little side all the way around is ready for a skim coat then what I did is I jumped down and I took care of this this flat here and it ended up going the full width of my trowel, but I just made sure that it's feathered right out. And you can see it's already dry. So I basically just went tight to the drywall. It filled up the beveled edge. I took that all the way across down and just right off the end. And you can see how it's filled up even all the way over to here. There must have been just a little bit of a hollow. So you can see that. Yes. And then what I wanted to do is to ensure that this corner was filled properly. I, I took a, a swipe that way with my trowel. And I just, since I did this side of the angle, and I know I have to do this angle again with the 6 inch, I just didn't want to mess anything up. I stayed an inch away, a safe enough distance so that I didn't get any mud and interrupt this side. And I just took a swipe that way. So now... For the next time when we show up, we can do this whole, oh, this whole bead this way and all the way, swipe at that. Then we can hit up this whole, uh, this whole butt joint slash outside corner bead. So now we're getting to a point where we're just skim coating. That way I can just mix my mud once, thin it right out, and we'll go over all this. But you can see how it's going. I did. So I just went ahead and I just did this little skim coat around this little edge. That's pretty easy. What's nice about the stage right now is when you're skimming you can push hard because the mud's already filled up as much as it can be. So now you're just skimming over making it really smooth. So that's what's good and that's what we'll do now is we're just going to do all these beads. Just going to blow it up. The mud will be a little bit thinner now. And now I can push harder in order, because I'm basically just putting it off and putting it on and then scraping it back off is essentially what's happening. It's been about three hours since we did our last coat, which is nice. The drying time is a lot less now with the thinner coats.
not quite feathering it out on that left side. So I'm just gonna do that right now. I'm just gonna put a whole bunch of weight, feather that out. And then I'll go over it once more. Sometimes at this point, I like to just make sure that edge is nice and clean. Nothing's starting to dry on it. Okay. Now I think what happened is I went a little bit too wide on my first and second coat that I'm not feathering this out as much. But what I'll do is you can just go a little bit wider, cut it back like I did, and then go over it. So let's just try it. I'll get this put on. Okay, so that looks good. You can see I went a little bit wider there. Just blends it out. Hopefully you don't have to do that. I'm just showing you how. Now this bad boy, and this will finish this up for the day. I'm going to just, this is my theory, just by feeling it, I know that there's a low spot right here. So I'm going to just go one swipe, top to bottom, then I'm going to work from this side over and see if that will work. Like hopefully I don't have to do it all in one. Because I just, I know there's a low spot in here somewhere, and this low spot here. So I don't want to go over this, I'll save that for the last fourth coat. And I'm basically, the, the fourth coat is just there for my own insurance. So that's looking really good. Now from this way, pretty much to the window. And this will be a two swiper, two wide. center lightly you just got to look at it you should be able to tell if there's any humps in it I think that looks good that way the last final coat I'll swipe it all it should just fill the last highs and lows and we should be done my model will be a lot thinner for that one So we're done for the day. Let's just take a look right here. You can see how this skim coat has helped this one. It's just filled a little low spot there and a little bit there. This must have been just high or whatever. So it'll be straighter once again. And we'll actually come back and shoot this butt joint in this corner maybe in 10, 15 just to see how it's progressing. And we'll go with that. Go for it. Just take a look. You can see all the highs and lows that we've hit. And it, I know that it's that much straighter. So it just helps to do that third coat. And the fourth will be even better. But you can just see we needed a little more fill here. Especially down below. This is filled up because this point is high. Because that's where our tape is. And then I, that's where I can feel this hollow spot. And then we've just feathered it out a little further, and you can see where it's wet there. And we already looked at that one, so we're good. It's, that just shows how important it is to 
just recoat. And that trowel is a godsend because it's just so straight and it keeps everything going the way it's supposed to. So I'm getting ready to do my skim coat. I've already went and sanded a little bit. We're going to skim out the corner beads as much as we possibly can today. So I went and just sanded out this inside edge to make sure it was straight. Just any little loose chunks or things like that. And then I've already gone over here, sanded this. Now I just want to show you what I'm sanding off so you can tell at home what to do and what not to do. If you can just see there's just this little fine edge from when I did the coat over here in this coat and this one here you can just see that line. I'm just going to knock that down a little bit because I don't want to really fill anymore I just kind of want to skim over everything. Okay. So that's just what we're going to get rid of. And then just always make sure you take care of down low as well so you don't have big chunks. <coughs> okay, so we're ready to do that. And then if it all works out, I'll hit this angle with the 6 inch. And the reason I want to do that is just to blend it out a little bit more because I find sometimes these corners are always just built up a little too much. So I like to just feather it out with the 6. And then I don't have to sand as hard get rid of this line then after that's all done I'll probably just go I'll finish all the angles you'll be able to see me do this one six inch you'll get the point then we'll be ready for sanding after all this so I've just I've thinned out the mud I might even have to do it a few more times as we go because now that I've did a little bit of sanding it's gonna dry this out fairly quick and I might not even go right to the inside angles anymore. I'm just, since I'm skimming it, I'm don't actually I'm not filling anything. Then I'm not going to wreck my angles. Oh dang. So one problem with having your mud too thin. That always happens. One hitchhiker there, I'm going to try one more time. Perfect. Okay, so you get the point of that. It's just basically apply it on and wipe it right flat, right off again. And then it'll just hit, fill any highs or lows. I'll just, I don't think you need to see me do the rest. I'm going to go ahead and do that. But I'll, I'll maybe shoot this one so you can see it. I'll just finish these beads. So I'm just basically getting mud applied across this whole pathway. Put it on, take it off. Okay, that looks good. Now, let's see how this goes. It shouldn't really affect it. I'm going to just pull this flat and pull it right through. Should work. I'm not going to carry it right to the inside corner because when I skim those out, it'll cover that. Good. There'd be a little sanding there. There's a little more of an edge, but I'm not going to chance it going over it again. Okay. And then let's just hit this 
angle with the six inch so you see how that all finishes out. So it'll probably just take little bits at a time. Don't want to make a giant mess and I'm not really filling anything. Okay, I'm going to leave that. You can see how well it's blended just by using a bigger knife. If you do like, I guess these angles have a tape and two coats, but if it's all done with the four inch, it's really hard to sand that out and get it nice and flat. So now that'll be flat. I won't touch anything else till this is all dry. I'll do, you know, I'll do this angle and this angle, wait for that to dry. Then I'll finish it. I'll hit my screw heads one more time to just give them a last fill. Then we'll show you how to sand it and it'll be, uh, we'll be done. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or check us out on some of the following.